Hello friends, welcome again to City Kids. I am so happy you're here with us to learn about Jesus. It's time for us to worship. We're singing Everlasting God. Make sure you sing along, okay? Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, we reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not fail. You won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength arises, we wait upon. As we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, we reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do. Welcome back. I hope you were dancing to that song. That song is one of my favorite songs. Now I have this book here. I'm trying to read more this year. So let's see if I can read this book quickly. Oh, wow. This page is very confusing. I'm going to go to the next page. Uh, no, no, no. I am really confused. Do you know what? In today's Bible story, there was a man who was trying to read a book. He was reading the Bible, but he was so confused, just like I am. God sent someone to tell him all about Jesus. Let's listen to today's teacher and I will see you after the class. Hello kids, my name is Yetune. Today's Bible story is titled Philip and the Ethiopian. Before we go into the Bible story, I'd like us to look at ways we can learn about Jesus. Yes, how can we learn about Jesus? Huh? Now the very first way is by singing songs about Jesus. Yes, by singing, just like we did today. I hope you sang along when we were singing the songs. You did very good. That's one way. Another way we can sing, learn about Jesus, is by praying to Jesus. Praying is talking to God. Do you know praying is actually talking to God? Oh, yes. So, praying is another way you can learn about Jesus. So, I'm going to invite you to pray. So, let's put our hands together so we can talk to Jesus. Hands together, let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for granting us another opportunity to learn about you, to know more about you. Lord God, we commit our lovely young hearts and minds to your hands. Father, help them to understand everything they shall watch, they shall listen to in the mighty name of Jesus. And we commit our gathering to your hands. And Father, take preeminence in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So, that's another way we just talk to Jesus. So, we learned about two ways, singing about Jesus, praying to Jesus. That's another way we learn about Jesus. Another way is by reading the Bible. How many of you like reading storybooks? Do you like reading storybooks? I love reading storybooks. 
and lots of lovely colors, lovely pictures, and great words. So, do you know the best story books of all? The very best, not all the story books you've been reading. No, they're good story books, but the best story books of all is the Bible. Oh yes, it is. Uh huh. The Bible is the best story book. So, and guess what? You can learn a lot about Jesus by reading the Bible. It's a very, very important way to learn about. In fact, a very wonderful way to learn about Jesus. So, reading your Bible every day, not just on Sundays. Yes, I know today's Sunday you read your Bible, but you ought to read your Bible every day because if you read your Bible, you learn more about Jesus. Is that okay? So, let's go on to another way we learn about Jesus. So, another way we learn about Jesus is by listening to you, teacher. Yes, you are listening to me. Okay, so another way you learn about Jesus is listening to teachers. Then, another one is by going to church. Yes, we go to, we all come together to church to learn about Jesus. We learn about wonderful things about Jesus that will help us to grow into good boys, good Christian boys and girls, and of course, to grow up all the way to being an adult. So we looked at five ways we can learn about Jesus. Now, can you tell me where we can do all this? Sing, to, sing songs about Jesus, study the Bible, uh, read the Bible, pray to Jesus, listen to the teacher and go to church. Where do you think we can do all this to learn about Jesus? Where? Did you say church? Oh yes, you're right. So you can learn, you can do all this by going to the church. Do you know you can do all things at home? Yes, with your mommy, daddy, your brothers and sisters, your uncles, aunties, your grandmas. You can stay at home and learn about Jesus. So you learn about Jesus at home, we learn about Jesus in the church, also learn about Jesus anywhere. Yes, it could be at the park, it could be at the church, it could be at the restaurant, it could also be in your school. Anywhere whatsoever. In fact, you can even learn about Jesus on the roadside. Oh, yes. So, you know, we go to church. We learn, we get as a church to learn about Jesus. Read the Bible together. We look at pictures of Bible stories. We sing songs and we pray together at the church. So, in today's Bible story, we're going to learn about a man who learned about Jesus in a usual way. So, let's watch the video. In today's Bible story, Philip met a man who didn't understand what he was reading in the Bible. He asked for help too. The Holy Spirit sent Philip to tell the man about Jesus. Listen to the story. One day, an angel told Philip to go to a desert road. So Philip went. On the road, Philip saw a man from Ethiopia. The man was an important official who worked for the queen of Ethiopia. He was riding in a chariot and reading the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit led Philip to go to the man. Philip ran up to him and asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man said, I need someone to teach it to me. Then he invited Philip into his chariot. Philip sat with the man who was reading these words from Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to be killed. And just like a lamb is quiet when its wool is cut, he does not say anything. What happened to him was not fair. His life was taken away. The man asked, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah, Jesus. Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. As they traveled down the road, they came to some water. The man asked the chariot to stop. He wanted to be baptized because he believed in Jesus. Philip baptized the man in the water and the man went home happy. The man from Ethiopia knew what the Bible said, but he did not know the Bible is about Jesus. 
the Holy Spirit led Philip to help the man understand the good news about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and he is alive. Welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. It was a lovely video. And remember, the video told us about a particular man named Philip, who the angel of a God told to go to a desert room. And Philip, being an obedient man, got up and went. On the road as he was going, Philip saw a man from Ethiopia. The man was an important official for the queen of Ethiopia. He, do you know what an important official is? Do you know what, who an official is? An official is someone who is in a, in a position of authority, someone that was chosen to represent someone an office, just like the queen chose the certain man to represent our office. And so he was riding in a chariot and was reading the words of the prophet Isaiah. So that Isaiah is one of the books of the Bible. The Holy Spirit led Philip. You know, Philip was on his way. The Holy Spirit led Philip to go to the man. Philip ran up to him and asked, Do you understand what you're reading? The man said, I need someone to teach it to me. Then he invited Philip into his chariot, and Philip got into his chariot. Philip sat with the man, and who was reading words from Isaiah. So remember, I told you that Isaiah is one of the books of the Bible. He was led like a sheep to be killed, and just like a lamb, it's quiet when its wool is cut. He doesn't say anything. What happened to him was not fair. His life was taken away. The man asked, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? And Philip answered, Isaiah was talking about the Messiah, Jesus. Philip began to tell the man the good, wonderful news about Jesus, how he came to the world to die for sins. He came to the world as a man. You know that he came to the world and he died for us. He came to take every single sin we've committed. He came to wipe it off. Died for our sin. So Philip told the man all these wonderful things about Jesus Christ. Such a wonderful story, don't you think? And that's how the certain man met Jesus. And as they traveled down the road, they came up about some water, maybe a stream or a river. And guess what the man said? The man asked the child to stop and because he wanted to be baptized because he what he believed. He believed in what? He believed in Jesus. He believed there was a man called Jesus. So he told the child to stop because he wanted to be baptized in Jesus. He wanted to be baptized in Jesus. And Philip baptized him, baptized the man in the water and the man went home Happy, very happy that he's gone. He has, he has gotten to. He's had a very, he had a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's come to know Jesus Christ. So it's very important to keep learning about Jesus Christ, the man who came to wipe all our sins, all the sins we committed. He came to the world and took everything. So make sure you always learn about Jesus. Remember what we learned today. We started with. Uh, ways we can learn about Jesus by singing together, studying the Bible together, praying to Jesus together, by listening to your teacher, and by going to church. And you remember how this certain man believed, got to know about Jesus and believed. So I will encourage you to always learn about Jesus by reading the Bible and doing all that we've talked about today. So let's put our hands together so we pray to Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for all our length today. Father, we have help us to help, Father, help us to love you and to obey you with joy. Father Lord, grant us the grace, grant us the courage to preach your gospel, to share the gospel with everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so it's time for your memory verse, but I've got a sign out here. I'll see you some other time.
Bye. Wow, wasn't that an amazing story? Thank God that Philip was able to explain to the Ethiopian man all about Jesus. Now it's time for our memory verse. Yes, our memory verse for this month is from Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. And it says, he is also the head of the body, the church. Which body? Which head? Okay, let me explain that to you, okay? The body is made up of different parts like your head. Can you touch your head? Your shoulders. Where's your knees? Okay, yes. And your toes, right? It's made up of different parts. The church is made up of different people, but we all make one body, the church. So who is the head of the church? Do you know who it is? His name is Jesus. Yes. So Jesus is the head of the body and the body is the church. Now let's learn the actions for our memory verse. Are you ready? Let's go. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. Let's say it again. Colossians 1 18. He is also the head of the body, the church. Did you get it? Let's do it one more time. Okay, let's go. He is also the head of the body, the church. Well done. I'll see you again next week. Have a wonderful week. Bye.